Sharing Wi-Fi land all over the world today. We greet you in the name above all others, the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, to whom be glory now and forevermore. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, in Southern California, where I live, we've had some very strong winds lately, day after day. And we're trying to grow alfalfa seed. So to make alfalfa seed, you have to have flowers. The wind was so strong that it stripped the flowers, actually pulled the flowers off of the plant. Well, if that wasn't bad enough, we also have cutter bees that pollinate the flowers to make seed. Cutter bees are very small bees, and they're not as strong as honey bees. So when the wind comes, it can actually blow those bee, little cutter bees away. So they hunker down next to the ground, maybe even getting in cracks in the ground to protect themselves from the wind. Well, I remembered in the Bible in 1 Kings chapter 19, the prophet Elijah. There were winds of adversity pushing against him through the queen, the woman Jezebel. She wanted to kill Elijah. So Elijah fled from her in fear for his life, and he went all the way down south to Mount Sinai, Mount Horeb, where the Ten Commandments had been given, and he went into a cave. And in that cave, God wanted to speak to him. First he came to him in a strong and mighty wind. It was so great that it rent the mountains and break the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And then there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And then there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And then there was a still, small voice of God. And Elijah covered his face in his robe. And he went out to hear the voice of God. You know, we've lived in this last year with great winds of adversity against us. And we have hunkered down in our caves or our homes uh, in fear, perhaps even for our own lives. But God, in all the powerful things that have happened around us, whether it's the government that has uh, made these cataclysmic decisions that seem such anyway, whatever has gone on, the voice of God is in a still, small voice. You see, these things of great power, they prick your conscience, make you feel your nothingness, maybe perhaps fear for your own life. But God allows that in order that he might speak to you in a still, small voice. You see, God wants a relationship with you. He wants to be able to meet you and that you could hear his voice. And we hear his voice through the word of God. It's not just about reading the Bible. It's about God, let me hear your still, small voice. Let me hear what you would say to me personally. My friend, this is the most wonderful thing that we have to look forward to, is to hearing the voice of God through His Word, that still, small voice. The Lord Jesus, He always got a sinner alone, and He would speak to them in tenderness and kindness, God loves you today. God proved it when he gave his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Not because we're lovely, we're not, we're sinners, but he loved us in spite of our sin. And he wants to bring us to himself and to speak to us words of grace. Grace. Yes, God is omnipotent. He's all powerful. And those things have an intended consequence to break us down, to bring us where we're willing to hear his word for us today. Won't you listen to him today and simply make this prayer, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. For his name's sake, amen.